Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Backstage Spotlight. We've got a very exciting episode today. We are joined by Eddie. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, living the dream, living the dream. Great. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself and tell everyone a bit about what you do in the industry? Sure. So yeah, I'm Eddie Slassery. I'm a choreographer and director. Um, I was a dancer for many moons. Um, I was in shows like uh, Saturday Night Fever and Chicago. Um, I worked as an assistant and associate on shows like uh, Shit Dumb Dancing, uh, Bridgerton, My Fair Lady recently in the West End. Um, did, did some work on the new Matilda movie that came out. Um, and yeah, I've just been doing all sorts of different stuff. I'm choreographing a, um, a couple of different shows at the moment for various um, cruise lines. And um, yeah, I'm out here just being busy doing lots of wonderful exciting things <laughs> that sounds like you do not get a break and that you're always so busy absolutely I do and I also I also teach well at lanes and arts ed and performers I'm always jumping around um, all of the colleges as well which is amazing and wonderful getting to meet new talent and doing lots of forum in latin lindy hop swing salsa I'm very much the the partner dance guy um I think that's a skill that's kind of super invaluable at the moment and I'm just trying to really share my my knowledge and my skill set with the next generation of dancers so I'm super excited that I can bring that to a room and share my knowledge so yes yeah, all wonderful stuff that is just amazing when did you realize that you wanted to do dancing as a career um as a career so I competed right from like eight years old to 18 years old as a ballroom in latin dancer wow. Um, and then I did a TV show called Strictly Dance Fever, which was, gosh, 2006, I think. You probably weren't even born, gosh. Um, I was born, I was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 2006, um, I did a, a TV show called Strictly Dance Fever. And at the time, as I said, I'd only really done ballroom, Latin, swing, like country, uh, rhythm. I'd done all sorts of different styles, but I hadn't done like uh, ballet, jazz, contemporary, uh, all of that. Um, and I was part of the girl on the show um, called Pamela Smith who actually went on to have a phenomenal career. Um, she went on to win other shows and had a phenomenal career over in um, LA. And I'm sure she was a dance captain and did stuff for like Janet Jackson and Gaga and all this amazing stuff. So yeah. um, I was part of with her on the show and she was at the time doing a degree at the Performing Arts Studio of Scotland in Edinburgh. And um, Arlene Phillips, I remember coming up. So we got through to the final, we got through to the final 12 couples in the BBC live show, all this lovely stuff. Um, I, it was a whole new world to me, you know, coming from a competitive dance background. Suddenly, I'm at the BBC in Shepherd's Bush, going, "What's going on? This is so bizarre. There's cameras and all this wonderful stuff." Um, and I remember Arlene Phillips coming and chatting to my parents afterwards, um, in like the green room kind of folding area, had a bit of a party afterwards, and saying, "He needs to be on stage. Um, he needs to get to theatre school. You know, the ballroom and Latin stuff is amazing, but you know, and it, she was really lovely and complimentary and all those wonderful, beautiful things that Arlene is." Um, and off the back of that, I actually went to theatre school and decided that this is what I want to do as a career from, you know, spending that time doing all the audition process, coming to London, getting to do the live show and just being surrounded by all these dancers from like other styles of dance was like totally inspiring. And I was like, I want to do that, too. So um, that was kind of when I decided I was going to go and take it properly, you know, take it serious, um, go to college, get my degree um and see what happens you know I very much was one of those youngsters that had super belief that you know why why bloody not you know let's give it a go and see what happens it'll be a bit of a laugh and I'll have a lovely time in the process and um luckily you know I'm here I here I am still working and doing wonderful things so uh blessed you know blessed <laughs> amazing absolutely fantastic and um how was your time at college um I loved college um I so there weren't many boys at my college so there was basically there were a couple of other boys but basically me and my best friend David who's still massively in the industry um it's just you know I think he was the resident or on Rock you in town recently and then he did Twiggy wow. and then he like before he, and then he was the resident on Beauty and the Beast and um like we were the two boys who took it super seriously like we were like best mates from day one of college like he came from a competitive dance background I came from a competitive dance background like we weren't there to play around we were there to like work really hard we were totally inspired by all the American dancers doing like, so you think you can dance, you know, like your Blake McGraths and Nick Lazzarini's and Travis Walls, like constantly watching these guys dancing. Like we want to be as good as these guys. Um, so um, yeah, David and I took it very seriously. The 
tutors really, you know, I think realized that we did take it seriously and we got to do loads of extra classes. We could jump in and do like second year ballet classes or third year ballet classes or contemporary classes. Um, and we had a great time, but it, um, it was, I think I was just lucky that I met someone like David. And it wasn't just David, there was a couple of other um, of our friends as well who took it really seriously. And we all really pushed um, in kind of not holding each other accountable, but we really pushed each other and like inspired each other to work really hard and be like, you know, like if we're going to do it, we may as well do it right and give it everything we've got. So, um, yeah, as I said, it worked out well. So <laughs> um, I, I had a lovely time at college. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I would love to go back. I always say when I go in and teach at colleges, I'm like, oh, gosh, what I would give to go back and just yeah. be training every day and not be worrying about other worldly things apart from, you know, how high can I jump and how many uh, foetis can I do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I had a great time. I loved it. And my teachers, I actually am still in touch with a lot of my teachers when I go home. Nice. Um, I teach at the different colleges that they're now, you know, they all work at different colleges in Edinburgh and Glasgow and they all have me back in to do like master classes and workshops. So um, it's really nice that I kind of kept in touch with a lot of the tutors. Um, and they're all super lovely and, you know, always well wishing and commenting on everything that I'm doing. So it's really sweet and lovely and wonderful. <laughs> yeah, nice. And yeah. a lot of people watching this podcast are like graduates, freshly graduating, um, mm. first, second years too. What would you say is the best thing to like think about in that third year coming up to the end and like starting to audition and your first contract how did that all play out for you and what advice would you give for people in that position now I mean I think it's not even a our industry specific I think this is just a life thing in any industry in which I think is network 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 um as we know our network is a net worth it's all about who we know who we surround ourselves with um who knows because I, I always say you could be the most talented dancer in London but if people don't know you exist then you're, you're never going to be booked so I think it's being in the right so getting to the right classes with choreographers that you want to work with and see like you know I, that style really suits me and I really want to work with this person it's trying to align yourself with people that you think you know um the work that you want to be doing really um it's having a good social media presence unfortunately you know it is a it wasn't in my day, but now it's really popular and really important, I should say, not popular, um, because it's basically your business card, right? Me as a choreographer, when I'm looking for dancers, someone says, oh, do you know this person? I'm like, all right, let's send me their Instagram. Da, da, da. I want to be able to just go on, see a really cu nice couple of headshots, some nice videos of them dancing to go, yeah, they're great. Book them, check if they're available, do a available to check. I'd love to have them in the room. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's basically that, isn't it? It's having really good social media presence showing people what you can do like really showcasing uh, your talents and I think reaching out to people it's all about networking it's letting people know that you're super keen um, you're driven you're passionate you're interested you want to get in those rooms you want to collaborate you want to have a voice in those rooms you want to be part of it all um, I think you, you need to be constantly out there chasing it because it's not you know my parents used to always say it's not going to come knocking on your door Eddie you have to get out there and get it <laughs> um you know like you know, no matter how talented you are you do um, um, you know not fortunately or unfortunately we have to be constantly chasing down those opportunities so my advice is align yourself with the people you want to work with let them know that you're super interested um and just keep working keep turning up be resilient you know just keep working hard because it can be tough and it can take a lot of time but you just have to believe that it's going to happen keep turning up keep working hard and i honestly believe that you know um so it's all it's kind of like a as i say to people it's like a survival of the, the fittest sometimes it's like the most resilient people end up getting there in the end because the, you're the last person standing so it's like well you, you kept turning up you know you didn't um and i know and it's, it's a hard industry and i get why people go this isn't for me and if it isn't for you that's also wonderful and and great if you want to step away and do something else but if you really want to do it i think you need to just keep turning up keep getting into class keep being around all the right people and I do think if you've got a good work ethic and a good attitude and you're lovely to be around and work with there's no reason why you can't you know have a, a wonderful career and keep keep working because we just want to be working with lovely people who can do the job it's not all about you know how high can you kick your leg and how high can you sing it's are you a lovely cast member um do we want you to be in the room with us and with our cast because you need to be a positive force right you need to bring something lovely and kind to the room as well as the talent that you or ev everyone has you know I always say you wouldn't be in the room auditioning if you if you weren't capable of doing the job so everyone can do the job 
uh, it's the the over and above like just be a, just be a bloody nice person that's all I can say yeah really really valuable advice there and it's so interesting speaking to um, loads of different people on my podcast because they all do come to the same conclusion and it is about really? personality and it is about it really Absolutely. is about how you communicate with others and your emotional maturity as well as your talent. 100%. It's a people's, it's this, this is a people's game. It's all about being being good people, right? And surrounding yourself with good people. That's what it's all about. And I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm not surprised that everyone else has said the same thing because we, that's just life, isn't it? As humans, we want to be around positive people that are fun to work with. Yeah, really important. So what are some challenges that you overcame, like coming out of college and if you could say something back to like your younger self, what would you say? Um, so I guess mo I was very lucky that I came out of college and went on to cruises and I had a lovely career. I did like eight years at sea doing like wow. music balls and being an aerialist and being a dance captain. I said Saturday Night Fever Chicago. I did uh, contracts as, a, as a, an aerial performer and um, I, had a lot, I had a great time. But it's when I left ships in 2015 and moved to London, that's when I was like, and at that time, I was nearly 30, right? So I was thinking, wow, okay. Um, I had I felt like I hadn't really lived in the real world in a bizarre way of saying it. I felt like I lived in this really lovely luxury bubble of cruise ships where I got all this beautiful food and I was making lots of money and I was on the beach every day. I was having a lovely time, um, living my best life shopping and my you know fancy watches and suits and everything else and didn't really think about the future. I just thought I'm having a, I'm a here and now, YOLO, have a lovely time, spend all my money. And, which is great, right? Jumping out of airplanes and diving with sharks and, you know, uh, jet skis and uh, huskies and all of that lovely stuff, which is wonderful. But um, challenges were, when, as I said, moved to London and was kind of stepping away from being a performer and wanted to kind of navigate over into that. How do I become a creative? How do I align myself with people I want to work with? So, you know, I, I'm pra practicing what I preach or practice and still am. Um, still building we're always building new net you know new relationships with new companies and people that we want to um, collaborate with um, it was the inconsistency of of work right it's like what we do in the in-betweens because um, I don't even think you know the most talented most successful choreographer directors in the world are constantly going from job to job to job um, so it's like what do we do in the, in the meantime so it's very much uh, the inconsistency of work was definitely the challenges that I faced so it's like not putting all my eggs in one basket and just relying on choreography. So I had to be doing lots of multiple, you know, there's lots of um, spinning plates. So it's like starting a wedding dance company. Like I've got a property company. I've got my own dance competitions. I've got my own intensive company. So that is all lovely things that I love and care about. And I'm trying to add as much value to all those kind of spaces that I want to, um, but making sure that I'm safe and I've got regular income coming in and I'm not worrying and I don't have to go, actually, I'm going to go and become a policeman because I can't perform anymore because there's no, I, I don't want to, you know, um, I don't want to run out of money type thing. So um, the challenges are definitely, and I'm sure everyone exp will experience this if they're not already, the inconsistency of actually being a dancer, being a performer. Um, there's all those in-between times where we have to go wait tables and pull pints and do the the admin jobs and stuff. And, um, you know, that doesn't take away from, that you're an artist, that you're a dancer, that you're a performer, you know, it's just the in-betweens. We can't, unfortunately, be constantly working. Well, some people do. Some people go from contract to contract to contract for many, many years, uh, which is great. But I think, yeah, the challenges I faced were putting all my eggs and I'm going to be a choreographer and it's going to happen now. No, Eddie, you're not. You're going to have to teach and you're going to have to do workshops and you're going to have to start multiple businesses and that's going to help you on the process to getting to where you need to get to, but um, you're not going to get there overnight. It's uh, It takes time. So it's, um, don't be afraid to, and you ha we have to just embrace doing the other things in between, unfortunately. Um, and it doesn't take away from being super talented. You just, it's the joys of being in London and paying expensive rent and now everything else that comes with it. So um, yeah, I guess that's the challenges for me were realizing that I couldn't solely just rely on being a choreographer or an assistant or an associate. I had to have, multiple things going on to to stay in London so yeah I remember when you came and taught at Lane for a few days and you were talking about what what you did to fill time in between contracts and mm. that's when I thought this guy switched on because <laughs> people don't realize going into this industry that 
your yeah. income might not be consistent and you do have to take ownership of that and think like what can I do to make myself an income that I know will support me in my living in my food like on the side of what I love to do as well and yeah. once you've figured that out like you can only go up and I think like when you talked to us about that it was so inspirational and kind of allowed us to see how we could apply that to our own lives and knowing that at a young age is so important as well oh gosh I wish I did if I knew now what I knew when I was you know 19 20 when I was doing all those cruise ship contracts I would I think I said this to you guys I would have retired you know I would have used all my cruise ship money I would have bought houses I would have flipped them or I'd have turned them into Airbnbs I would have built a lovely little cash flowing portfolio of properties and um, I would be financially free right my assets would be paying for my income and I'd be choreographing just for the I mean I do choreograph because I love it but it's still paying my my bills right yeah. I'm not in a position where it's not paying my um I'm, I don't have all my other stuff isn't you know I'm still relying on multiple incomes so um yeah I just wish I, I knew then so it's like I think I spoke to you like rich dad poor dad and all these types yeah, of yeah I'm, I'm reading that right now I use yeah. that and cash flow quadrant yeah is the I'm next one of that which is rich dad poor dad it's a good yeah. one to get your head around it in the first place absolutely and that so many people are I, again, I wasn't exposed to these books when I was your age and the, I wasn't really surrounded by people who were talking about this. Um, and I really feel like if I did, I would have had, I'd be in a very different position. Not that I'm in a bad position, but um, I would have been 10 years ahead of where I, you know, where, where I am at the moment. But it's all exciting stuff, but it's financial literacy and everything. You know, if it's not taught in the home, go and pick up the books, read to the millionaire next door, read the richest man in Babylon, rich dad, poor dad, cash flow quadrant, listen to money podcasts and see how people are making money and how you can do, how you can use your money to make money for you. It's like how we make our money work for us, right? Instead of just going, oh, don't get me wrong. Everyone loves a Louis Vuitton bag and a Rolex, great. But, you know, not wasting it on liabilities. Although people would argue that's potentially an asset because it holds value. But you know what I mean? Go on, yeah. go on dreaming it on things that don't hold value. It's like spending my money on things that do hold value or are going to create me an income. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's very important, I think, when we're in such a um, an industry where it is so... Um, you know, you never really know what's gonna what's gonna come in. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's money. <laughs> Learn about money and make it work for you guys. <laughs> if everyone in my year, like age 19, 20, 21, read like yeah. just rich dad, poor dad, like this generation would be a whole yeah. a whole load different because I, I agree. You start, when you start young, and which is why I'm I'm reading it now, you can plan your life. Yeah. And it's just yeah. you just have so much more hope for financial freedom 100 percent. still being able to do what you love yeah of course and there's lots of people now now i'm in the property game i realize that there's a lot of people in our industry who are also in the property game they just might not talk about it whereas yeah. i'm very much an advocate for i want to share my knowledge and my skills with everyone like this is what i'm doing this is how i'm doing it yeah. lots of people are just kind of doing it in the background i'm like why are you not talking about it and i'm like oh people aren't interested people people don't want to know and i'm like i'm sure they do like yeah. Even like my my like other friends that I have, and I'm like, you know, they say to me, "Oh, I did. I bought six houses like over the past fifteen years." I didn't, and I was like, "Well, why didn't you even mention it, man? You, just, you could have told me what you've been doing." They're like, "Oh, it's just boring. It's just something I was doing in the background. I didn't really think it was anything you would be interested in." And I was like, "Okay, fair." But um, yeah, it's. I think people need to start reading about it and learning about it because. There is a lot of people in the industry who are doing it because they've taken the money from being in town or being on tours and they've bought a little, you know, little council flat and done it up and refinanced it and or whatever, some something nice in the coast and running it as an Airbnb just to make sure you can get an extra thousand, two thousand, well, whatever you want, right? Thousand, two thousand, three thousand a month coming in from other places that don't rely on you, have to sell your time for money and go, you know, that's over and above. So you're in a nice, secure place right because it's not a secure um career that we've chosen as much as we love it <laughs> yeah really great let's go on to your time working on Strictly Come Dancing would you like to explain like your role yeah so I was the assistant choreographer to Jenny Thomas who is phenomenal and amazing and wonderful um if, for those of you that don't know who Jenny is I think she's Jenny Taps on Instagram uh look her up she's amazing she's probably one of the most famous kind of Lindy Hop and swing choreographers in the world. Um, and we're lucky that she's, you know, just 
my pal Jen. Um, so I assisted her on the Salsas and the Charlestons um, on Strictly. And uh, yeah, she's phenomenal and got to work primarily with like um, OT and Anton and Katia, who are all really amazing, lovely people to work with. Um, and Emma Barton was with Anton. Uh, we did their thoroughly modern Millie routine, which got her to the final, which was really cool. And then they also got to see it performed at the O2 Arena, which was also very cool. And I was like, yay, I helped <laughs> choreograph that number. How cool is that? So, um, yeah, working on Strictly is great. And um, my other half, and in, in like, she's a professional ballroom dancer too. And we used to teach at Karen Hardy Studios. I, I'm doing that because it, the studio is literally like, across the road from where we live now, which is hilarious. I'm like, yeah, the studio. Uh, yeah, we used to teach at Karen Hardy Studios. Um, and it shut during COVID, unfortunately. But before that, because she was an ex-Strictly pro, um, she used to bring in all the Strictly pros to the studio to do workshops and classes mm-hmm. and lessons. So um, we've known all those guys for years, like the good friends of ours. And then we also worked as um, like support dancers on the Strictly cruises. So doing shows with the pros um, and teaching workshops and master classes and stuff with them as well. So yeah, working on Strictly is all, a lot of fun. Amazing. <laughs> it sounds like a dream. What was your mm. favourite um, routine that you worked on? Oh, so uh, probably the thir- the thoroughly modern Millie one was fun because um, it was musicals. We can we get all the extra dancers, right? So we get to get play with props and um, yes. the extra dancers. So that's really fun. Um, we also did the Austin Powers salsa, which I don't know if you remember, but it was the one where um, Craig said to Anton about his teeth, but they were actually his real teeth. And everyone was like, oh, <gasps> like, oh, no. yeah, it's like. And those hideous teeth or something, and we all, like, died. So I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, so that was a fun one to work on as well, a bit of Austin Powers salsa. Um, that was with Emma as well. i um, trying to think what the other fun ones. We did Fantastic Flying Machines for um, Katia, which was a lot of fun because um, Mike Bushel is just, like, the sweetest man in the world. Like, he's so lovely, and we had such a lovely time working with him. Um, he just like tried so hard and like used to message me at night and be like, Eddie, I'm really working on it. I'll have it by tomorrow. And Aww. like he was so lovely and used to like message me and like thank me for being like taking my time with him and like really helping him out. And uh, he was mm-hmm. just as little he's like the lovely, sweetest man. So I like Mike a lot. And um OT was with oh gosh, what's his name? Uh Kelvin Fletcher. Kelvin was a lot of fun to work with as well because he's like a big strong guy. So we could just throw lots of interesting like lifts and tricks at him. Um, and he'd just be like, what, like this? And he could just do it. And I was like, yeah, mate, just like that. So that was a lot of fun working with him and OT. Um, so yeah, I don't really have like a specific one that's like our favourite. Like, I, you know, they're, they're all just a lot of fun, really, in different ways. Yeah. Working with the different pros and celebs and like the different themes is always really fun because you never quite know what you're going to get. And um, yes. Getting to work with the props and the extra dancers and stuff is, is always really fun. So, um, yeah, it's always lots of good times. <laughs> so you mentioned working on shows like Bridgerton, like on Netflix. Mm. How is working behind the camera as opposed to choreographing for stage? Uh, yeah, so very different, which I which I love. So I think um, I kind of fell into TV and film just by chance, really. Like when I moved to London, and it's this whole thing, as I said, reaching out to choreographers and building my network. Um, a lot of the choreographers that got back to me just so happened to be TV and film choreographers. A lot of the stage um, guys, I, I guess, already have teams in place that they've maybe worked with for a long, long time. Whereas I think it's a bit more of a revolving door in TV and film because it's so here, there and everywhere when you need to just kind of grab people when they're, if and when they're available. Um, so I found that really exciting. So the first person I assisted was Richard Marcel. Um if you don't know Richard, look him up. He's phenomenal. He's a, an amazing salsa commercial choreographer. He's done stuff like James Bond and all sorts of different stuff. He's got a, again one of them. He's got a CV that could choke a horse. Um, but you know, if you if you don't if you're not in his circle, you might not know that he's just always working. He's always somewhere lovely choreographing stuff. I'm sure he did the Mamma Mia movies and stuff as well. Um, but I started working with him and just being able to be an assistant and shadow choreographers, like choreographing for cameras. Um it's a whole different language and a whole different way of working because you're working with jibs and handhelds and steady cams and all different things. And um, it's really unique and interesting because you can totally um, choreograph and show the audience exactly what you want them to see. Whereas in a stage production, they could be looking anywhere at any time, right? Obviously you have like your central action point, but in a camera, like choreographing for camera, I find 
well, I, I kind of totally fell in love with it. I thought it was so interesting um, being able to, you know, move through different worlds and spaces and you can be choreographing on stairs. And then in a second, you're up on a roof and then you're maybe down on the ground and then maybe you're sliding. You know, it's you don't have as much freedom um, in stage, obviously, because you're hindered by being a human and only being in one place at one time. But with cameras, um, I found that really interesting choreographing for camera. I think it's um very very cool and that's that's what i'm more i'm trying to um lean more into to that side of the of the industry as well but um yeah it's really fab and it's also interesting working with different choreographers and how they also choreograph and work with yeah. the, the, the 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 dop and the the directors and how they work with um the cameras and storytell as well so adding in the the words with the movement and then how the camera's going to fly and like oh it's going to happen here you know the, the crane's going to fly up here and then we're going to have a steady cam here so we're going to have to reshoot and reset all these different sections so it's a much longer process um you know for the sake of you know sometimes seconds of footage in a in a in a, in a film or in a, a tv series and you're thinking oh my gosh the amount of money time and energy that went into creating that little 10 second sequence that the audience get to see and you're thinking that was a that was a 15 day film shoot like wow <laughs> so um yeah it's, it's really amazing it's really exciting i just think what you can do with technology and cameras um is is, is ever evolving right because the technology is ever evolving so it just gives us a new, i call it a, play, it's a new playground to, to create with which I find it really exciting. So um, yeah, it's it's really fun if it's just creating dance for like like strictly or like a Bridgerton, um, where you're adding in uh, you know, at this point this character is going to be speaking here, there, and there. So you know they can't have a lot of action happening here because they're speaking and don't want them to be out of breath. So we choreograph certain sections for certain things to happen, and that's obviously all prepped and spoken about in the kind of pre-production and, and, and planning stages and rehearsal stages so yeah it's really it's really it's really different but really exciting I mean I love both um, but I do love the TV and film stuff because I think um, there's, there's like a kind of a bigger budget there and you get to play with more toys I like toys I like creating with fun mm -hmm. things like right, we get to you know work on big crazy sets and all these big beautiful country manors and homes and buildings and streets and um it's that you're creating different spaces and i think that's interesting and, and unique and I, I love that yeah it's mesmerized me like film and tv is like a whole new world and it's yeah on, like i feel like when you are in college they don't talk about it as much but it when you leave college and then there's more auditions it's a whole new world well, um, yeah. it's, it's really great if you could choose a dream job to do Ooh. in your career at some point, what would it be? So I, so there's not like a dream job. I wish there was, and I feel a bit, um, I feel a bit sad that I don't have a dream job. It's just like a dream company and like a dream project. It's not yeah. necessarily like I want to work on X show or X this. Um, but my dream is like probably like most choreographers, or maybe not, maybe it's just me because I'm just a big Disney nerd, but it's like a Disney live a live action like movie musical yeah. is like my dream. Like, you know, like I've already done like an Aladdin and a Little Mermaid or something, you know, but like a Hercules or yeah. something, something epic, you know, it leaves a legacy behind, you know, it's movement. It's, you know, it's hopefully going to be uh, li live on, you know, way after me and all of that type of stuff. So it's just creating fun work with fun people and like you know getting to work on something as iconic as as that would be amazing so for me it's like yeah it's the disney live action like movie musical um it's kind of like my dream job really at the moment um it might change who knows i also um i love Cirque du Soleil i would love to create some work for Cirque du Soleil at some point as well um with my aerial stuff i'm actually creating a show at the moment and i'm choreographing a lot of aerial stuff which is That's exciting amazing. I'm yeah. working with like straps and trapeze artists and hoop and oh, all wow. sorts so um bungees and everything. So that's really fun. Yeah. Um so yeah, Disney and Cirque are definitely top of my list of really fun, exciting companies and projects that I would love to to work for. Um, but really it's just about creating great work with great people, right? It doesn't really matter, you know. It's again, I think I love the TV and film stuff because there's something weird about being able to leave something behind that sounds pretty morbid but it's not i don't mean it in that way it's kind of like when i'm not here anymore i want to be able to leave work behind it people can go oh my crazy uncle eddie who was a choreographer did that you know or whatever oh uh, yeah you know, i just think that would be really um really special and, and yeah. not everyone gets that opportunity right 
Um, so yeah, Disney and Cirque du Soleil are like my dream, top of my top of my list of companies I'd love to create something really special for. So yeah. you know, well, let's see, let's make it happen. Put it out yeah. into the universe, Get manifesting as we speak. For that. Yeah, for yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> oh amazing and the last question I always ask my podcast guests is mm. if you could nominate someone to come and impart their knowledge on my podcast who would it be and I'll reach out to them oh um can it be two people I mean no, yeah I, go for I, it <laughs> um so Jenny Thomas just because I work with Jenny and she's yes, amazing that would be fun. um and I think not a, enough people in the industry know about Jenny but she's another one um, like Richard and stuff who's been working behind the scenes on lots of big amazing projects for a long long time so unless you I know her from the Lindy Hop and Swing Dance world and then I knew that she was doing a lot of big stuff on Strictly and working on films and all sorts mm -hmm. um, she um, I'm sure she went to Bird I've got a feeling she's a birdie um, so she is a musical theatre performer and was and danced for lots of big artists um, and then kind of went down the Lindy Hop and Swing and created like Swing on Broadway and like, done lots of really cool stuff. So I think Jenny would be an amazing one to get on. Um, and she's also just a dreamboat and really fun. Um, and Bill Deemer, um, just because Bill, you know, like him and Stephen. Uh, yeah, I saw that you had Stephen on recently as well. Yes. Um, those guys are kind of like the godfathers of musical theatre, aren't they, at the moment? <laughs> like they're just the, the top guys in the industry doing all the classics and all uh, creating amazing work. So Bill would be amazing. And Jenny would be amazing. I would love to listen to both of their podcasts. But I think it's all about just bringing on people who have been working for a long time, try yeah. to get as much knowledge and experience, get them to share their knowledge and experience um, and give the next generation of dancers some really lovely kind of insightful advice moving forward and things that hopefully will be really valuable. So, yeah. They would be fantastic episodes. Thank you so much. Everybody listening, thank you all. Make sure you subscribe, give the podcast a five-star review wherever you're listening, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. Make sure you go and check Eddie's socials out, see what he's up to at the moment. Get yourself hey. Rich Dad, Poor Dad the book. And um, we'll see you next week. Thank you so much, Eddie. It's been an absolute dream. Thank you so much. Have a lovely week. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Take care. Bye. Bye.